Um, so here, let's do this. The intro, cue the intro. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> so let's do this. Let's... Valley, but... <laughs> no, it's definitely not like any uh, techno. <laughs> well, actually, no, it is dance music. I'm not going to lie. Um, it but... is. <laughs> okay hey everybody hi hey so we are here for the first episode of 2024 and we have an interesting a very exciting like twist of yeah. an episode where we're not really going to be a part of it so if i can start from the beginning welcome back to our podcast we're not going to be a part of it yeah. at all <laughs> so if you like us too bad <laughs> so uh I would say about six months ago, maybe a little more, I was catching up with a friend that I hadn't talked to in a while. And I, I, don't, I don't quite remember how we got into the conversation, but I ended up opening up about everything. The fetish, the selling content, the podcast, everything. And uh, anyway, we went without talking for another length of time because uh, we both have you know pretty busy schedules so we finally reconnected the other day uh, and we kind of reignited this old idea that we had for her to be on the podcast and conduct an interview with a small group of people that have the fetish uh, I think originally the idea was going to be her interviewing us but I don't know I thought how cool would it be if she like came in and uh I don't know, interviewed a, a few people that uh, aren't us. And I don't know, I just figure everybody's tired of hearing our voices and hearing our stories. <laughs> so I just thought it'd be a good idea to make this small group. But anyway, Ray is here. Say hi, please. Belly buttons. Am I oh, right, guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why? So you're, you're here. <laughs> Your let's start from the very beginning. Like, what did you think about when I first opened up to you about this? What did you think of it? I, I honestly didn't really bat an eye. I, I'm very chill with most things. If mm -hmm. anything, I'm just in, extremely interested and also confused, which is why today <laughs> should be a uh, an interesting session. Yeah, yeah. So um, I haven't I haven't really told you anything about this. Like. We have not. I yeah. We haven't dove into any details. I know, nothing. I I I was very close initially to looking at the podcast when you first told it to me, mm -hmm. but I never ended up listening. So I know literally not a single thing about <laughs> any of this in any way. Um. So. I have a feeling it might be a little bit like trying to describe a color to someone who's never seen it before. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it's kind of, I assume it has to be kind of like a, a learned experience. Sure. But I, I will try my best. That's kind of like the best way to conduct an episode mm -hmm. like this. Like I wanted you with a clear mind, no real preconceived notions about it. Just you're going to dive in fresh, ask some questions. And uh, go from there. And I think it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's going to be fun. And if I'm not mistaken, a couple of these guys probably haven't spoken in a group setting um, like this before. It's, it's, it's going to be a very vulnerable thing for them as well. Um, but I feel like we found like the best mix of personalities and uh, the people who could probably communicate these odd ideas like the best, you know, so. I'm excited. I'm glad I get to represent the population of completely clueless people. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. How about we start a quirky little intro where everybody just goes around and introduces themselves and let's say introduce yourself and say 
how long you have been a part of Audi's community. Do I say Audi or Audi Bite? I'm just going to call you Audi. Deal with it. <laughs> so, David, you can go first. Thanks. Hi, my name is David. Um, I've been a listener of Inside the Audi for about a year now, just, just a little over a year. And as far as the fetish goes, I've looked at and I've been involved in the sphere for about, you know, 10 years. Okay. And Ava. What's up? I'm Ava. Um, I have had this fetish my entire life and I've been involved in the community in different ways for about 20 years. And I started talking to Audi by and Zoe about six months ago. Um, and I found them through the podcast when I think it was on episode two. So super excited to be here. Wow. Well, I'm on episode zero. So, and Jordan. Uh, my name's Jord. I'm an Aries. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, I, same as Ava, I've had this thing my whole life and really was just lurking in the community behind the scenes for like years until recently. So like oh, I wow. found Audi through that sort of thing. And he so graciously invited me on this podcast. <laughs> and here we are. Okay. So because it's already been brought up, I think a good segue question for me to figure out is, let me find the question. Oh, damn. It's written down. Oh, I have about 30 plus questions. Oh, um, damn. I don't think we're going to get to them all realistically, so I'm going to try to just cherry pick the ones that would make the most sense. You're the host. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't find it, so I'll just wing it. And um, uh, do we want to go in reverse order or the order we initially answered it? Um, let's go with just the order that you already gotcha. have answered in. Why not? So is everybody familiar with just that whole trope of sexual awakenings? of of like a memory of when you first realized that this was something that you were into does does everyone have a memory like that so i do okay do you want me to start what, yes yeah what what is okay. the, the memory um so the first moment that i well it's very fuzzy because you know i don't know where it exactly started but the first time i was like conscious of it that like belly buttons was something that like i was interested in that gra that grabbed my attention was when i was um four i think and i watched a lot of vh1 like stuff i probably shouldn't have been watching and i remember on some of the music videos it was like it was um there were two artists that it was uh christina aguilera and uh kelly clarkson and they had music videos out, out in the time where um they had exposed navels and every time i would watch those videos like i would pay attention to that more than anything else and it was just it was just uh i don't i'm not sure if i knew what belly buttons were like i probably did but i remember watching them and just thinking about it too like that their belly buttons w were showing that there was something about them that was more different than anything else and um yeah that was when i first realized that there was something in my brain that just noticed belly buttons oh, wow and then ava uh yeah so i have like dug so deep into my memory desperately trying to figure out like how this all happened how did i end up here <laughs> and uh i don't know i don't know what specifically started it but um also, like David, I think around age four is when I remember starting to have a lot of thoughts about belly buttons. And um, I remember like when I first went to kindergarten, just always noticing like other kids in my class, like when their shirts would ride up. Um, I also remember feeling very embarrassed just about like bellies belly buttons, anything to do with them. So I remember they had like this song they made us sing in kindergarten about like a dog <laughs> that was really fat. Um, and there was like this part about 
his tummy and I couldn't say the word tummy in the song. And so I would just skip over it. Um, so I remember I just, I was so confused because I was really interested. Like I always wanted to look, I always wanted to see stuff about it, but I also felt super embarrassed about it. Oh, okay. That actually kind of touches on a question that I had also about like, do you, are you guys more modest about belly buttons because you view it as kind of a, a sexual thing? So, so like you couldn't say the word tummy because it, it was the equivalent of like saying something vulgar in a way. Yeah. Oh God, no. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I think this might be like a big topic because from what I've heard uh, from some of the other podcast episodes, a lot of people do have kind of a similar experience with this. Um, honestly, for me, until the past, up until the past few months, when I started talking a little bit more out loud to Audi Bite and Zoe, I could not say belly button out loud. I could not do it. And now here I am on a podcast speaking to the entire oh. internet. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Um, congratulations. <laughs> I know. Um, but, but yeah, so that's always been a big thing for me. I know people are a little bit different about it, but I never wanted to draw attention because I think I was nervous that I would have a reaction that gave me away. Like I would be, oh, like okay. I would blush or I would be too interested or something like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more I could say about my experience, um, but that's kind of the the gist of it. I mean, I, just being very interested and before I had any context as a kid to know that it was a sexual thing, I just I just didn't know what to make of it, really. Um, and then it wasn't until I was maybe like 12, 13, 14 that I was like, oh, OK, I see what's going on. And Jord. It's kind of amazing how much of a mishmash of David and Ava I am where it's like the same thing can't really pinpoint the very first time where I'm like, I like the thing other than there was this one scene in men in black two at the very intro where there was a basically a Victoria's secret model. And that, that I, I felt so before I even knew what it was that I was feeling, I felt so scandalous because I woke up early when everybody was asleep in the house and just rewound the scene over and over oh, and wow. over again. And I was like, oh, I don't know what this is, but I think I'm bad. <laughs> it was the same thing where it was like the early 2000s were like heaven or hell, depending how you look on it, with, with the fashion. It was all about low rise and, oh, yeah. and stuff like that. And it's just like, oh, my God. And now that's coming back. And it's like, oh, Jesus. But um yeah, it's always been a thing where I feel the same way. Like, I, I'm finally getting to the point where I can say certain words, but for the longest time, it was like, I felt awkward if somebody was talking about it, you know? And it's just like, okay, I, I always felt like this, you, you got the, the Christian guilt from growing up combined <laughs> with that. And then it's just like, oh, this is this spot that's very, you know, uh, erogenous to me, you know? And yeah. nobody else feels this way. So there's this sense of isolation and shame combined, you know, just this othering about it. And it really wasn't until I started actually actively, like I got invited to a discord server. I was a casual fan of Audi bites until uh, he was actually in the server. And it's, it's been interacting with people there. That's gotten me really out of my show with that stuff. Very intriguing. I still have no concept though. So let's try to, Help me figure this out. <laughs> we got um, you, sister. So I have absolutely no idea how this works. It's, I just, my brain hits a wall when I try to imagine how it works. I'm not, I don't know how else to explain that. <laughs> so I'm going to get into uh, a more specific question. Let me pick one out. I will say, Ray, um, earlier when you were talking about how it's kind of like describing what a color is, uh, I think you said, I don't know if you said to someone who's colorblind or like who can't just yeah, discern color. describing yeah. a color to someone who's never seen it before. Yeah, that's accurate. I think. Yeah, that's how it's going to it's going to be a lot of me going, oh, yes, interesting. I don't know, but OK. <laughs> I'm honestly just really interested to just learn what it is and how it works. It was hard to keep myself completely ignorant for this, honestly. I wanted I wanted to Google some stuff. Okay, this is a big one for me. And I hope that other people that are outside of the fetish also 
think this. Is it the concept of what a belly button is, or is it about how it looks visually? That's a really good question. That's an incredible question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you got to you. You, you make a very salient <laughs> point. Is it like, is it like, you know, because obviously I'm like, oh, I like the belly button. That belly button's pretty. I like the way it's like, it's, I, 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 I like how round it is. I like how the details are at the back. I like how, you know, how vertical it is or whatever. But, well, maybe I should talk about like why I like, well, what was the question that you wanted to ask? <laughs> uh, it was just a simple question, uh, I guess, for you personally. Is it the concept of what a belly button is or is it about how it looks visually that that does it for you? How it looks visually, definitely. Because like, I definitely have a lot of belly buttons that like I go back to and that I think about sometimes like these are belly buttons I really like because of their shape or because of like their depth or just... They have characteristics that I find to be very attractive. But what you said about how, like, what a belly button is, like, I think that may be in the background because, like, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not really intrigued by it because it's a, it's like a scar because it's a birth scar because it's like how you were sustained by the, by, uh, by the umbilical cord. But it's like, it, it has a very, it has a certain quality to it that, like, what you're looking at is like, I don't know, in some ways, perfect, like naturally, because all belly buttons are different. You, you don't really, there's not really a huge thing for, co for like cosmetic surgery on belly buttons. So the ones that I really like are like how they've always been kind of, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It's just that, that natural beauty. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's something very natural. At least okay. th that's how I would phrase it. All right. What about you, Ava? Yeah, so I love this question, and um, I'm going to try not to share forever on it because I'm sure I can touch on some of my thoughts and other questions too. Um, and this might be also like uh, deviating a bit from what you're asking, but for me, um, there's definitely a very strong visual component. You know, I really like the way belly buttons look. I definitely have very specific preferences in terms of what I'm really drawn to and, and what doesn't really do much for me visually. Um, but as a concept, I think that's what you said. So I, I don't at all think about like the, the, I guess like the scientific concept, but I think I'm very in my head psychologically when it comes to my fetish, like a big part of what really, uh, is exciting for me is, um, thinking about what's going through someone else's head when they're having their belly button played with, or like. To me, that's that's a big part of it. I my preference is to play with other people. I mean, I I love being played with myself, but my favorite thing is to play with someone else who's really really into it. Um, and so, a big part of it conceptually for me is like thinking about how that might feel for them. For me, kind of like I touched on earlier, there's a bit of like embarrassment and shame that has gone into my fetish. So thinking about someone else maybe having that emotional experience when they're having their belly button played with is super arousing to me. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's such an innocent body part too. And I think that contrasted with sexuality, like really intense sexuality, that to me is kind of a conceptual thing as well. It's like, here's something really innocent that I find really sexual and that is very appealing to me. So it's a little bit difficult to, to explain all this stuff, like I said, I can talk about this one for a really long okay. time. But I really, I really want to come back to that because there were multiple things that you said that sparked even more questions. <laughs> sure, yeah. So, but I'll pass. But, uh, yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to hear about George first. Uh oh. Well, uh, I just wanted to preface it with: you're really not going to find too many people in this community who like the actual concept of it is their turn on. You know, there's certain people where I've seen it's like there's a surgical aspect to it or something like that. They might be into it. And I guess if you want to get like really philosophical about it, there's like the maternal aspect of the umbilical cord and everything like that. But for me, I agree with both David and Ava where it's just pretty much strictly a visual thing. OK, I just like I like how they're so socially accepted that they're not even thought of as a potentially erogenous or sexual spot 
So it's often a thing where people are stretching, they get exposed, you know, that sort of thing. And it's, I don't know, just like since, since I was a kid before it was even sexual, it was just always a thing that I was intensely attracted towards. And then as I got older, it was just like, all right, well, I thought this would get better. It's only gotten worse. So I guess we're in there. And just everything about it, like they said, the shapes, how they move, details, how everybody has unique aspects of theirs. So um, to help me know. wrap my head around this, would you all agree it's it's kind of the same thing as people really liking boobs or a six pack, even though they're exactly. not considered sexual organs? Exactly. Okay. Like it's okay. Th- that that's I think the problem and why people get kind of weirded out or othered by it is it is like Ava put it such an innocent area, and a lot of people think of it as just like the funny thing they poke from time to time. But you know, just like boobs or a six pack, where it's like okay. they don't necessarily have to be sexual. It is for some of us, and you know, it's very intensely so. Okay. That I, I have so many questions that I could bring up, but I want to bring it back to Ava it. because I said that I would. Um, so you mentioned something about belly button play. Yeah. And I have truly no concept of what that means. <laughs> um, uh, I, that, that is like one of the big questions is how does it even work? Is Because the only thing that I can imagine is that it would just tickle. But is that a part of it? Is that why it's enjoyable? Well, I'm actually very curious to hear what you think it is. But is that is that the only thought you have? Tickling? The, the, the only, only thought, two. Sorry, well, no, 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 no. The the only two things that I can really imagine is is like a finger, and you're just kind of you're kind of just twirling it around in there. <laughs> I have no other concept of of what it could be. I mean, that's a great place to start. Love okay. twirling finger in a belly button, uh, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, everyone's everyone's into different things, obviously. So I'll speak mostly to my own preferences. Um, so I tend to gravitate more towards like sensual and gentle play. I'm not really into pain. I'm not really any into anything too extreme. So for me, as you already said, touching, fingering, that sort of thing is something I really like. Uh, both doing to someone else or having done to me. Um, also, licking is super huge for me. I oh, I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, that's like that, okay, that makes that best. makes more sense. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, like to me, like some of those basic things, just just touching, like also like kind of inspecting someone's belly button, like taking my time, getting to explore it, uh, is something I really like. Um, and then even though those are kind of just a few simple things that I like, just like any other sexual thing you can bring them into a lot of different scenarios so you can bring them into like if you're into other stuff like bondage or like power dynamics or i don't know role playing different types of things you can incorporate like licking fingering um inspecting like all these different things into that and so did you just say inspecting yeah i did what what <laughs> How, did, oh, you can yeah, take out a magnifying brother. glass what what is inspecting yeah, uh, I mean, no, I, I guess I've never used a magnifying glass. I don't know, like, um, do you like check for lint? You could check for whatever you want. Oh, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> I mean, who knows what's gonna be what you're gonna find? But um, what no, are you, it's, what do people hope to find when they're inspecting? I mean, for me, it's more a thing of like I, I just want to see the details. I want to see what it looks like. I want to see. Oh, okay. Like, okay. So yeah. you could use like. No. Well, I'll pass it over to someone else. I want to. I want to hear some other perspectives. Yeah, it's not what, what she says. Inspecting. It's not like we're fucking prospectors here. <laughs> yeah, like, like, mm, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's without the ruler. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Like it's a thing of. Just, I I think the the problem is because people think of it as such an innocent area, they don't treat it the way you would any other area of the body. So the same way you might look at like something more traditionally sexual and be like, nice. Hey, I want to get like more of a look on that. That's how we feel in this area, you know? And it's, Mm -hmm. there are going to be some people who are, you know, straight up super, like super serious about inspection. But for the most (laughs) part, it's just like, hey, I want to see what you're working with. Honey, it's time for inspection. (laughs) 
yeah nobody nobody's like you ready to get suspected you know like <laughs> i mean maybe some people but hey you know it's it's just an area that we we like and it's always a thing of like the at least for me i don't want to put words in anybody's mouth but it's always fun to be like i wonder what they're rocking what do you got okay and then it's like oh okay you know it's it's always fun to kind of like play that guessing it, okay. game and find out for yourself. Do you? I oh, there's yeah. so many questions that I can ask. Um, I am on a sister. I'd we're like here. to add something, Ray. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So for for a lot of people, for me included, um, inspecting has a lot to do with the details of of the navel, and um, I think that's the main thing that interests me is just how different every navel looks, and you know the small like differences i can find but for some people there are certain parts so the navel is an erogenous zone and for some people it's more erogenous than others and oftentimes a lot of those details are uh a lot of them have different levels of sensitivity so you were talking about belly button play a lot of people uh, combine navel inspecting with object play so they'll take like a long slim pointy object like say a, a pencil or um or like, or something more blunt, like a Q-tip. Ow. And they'll, that's basically what navel play is. You just, you take something, you like, you experiment with, with like pressure or like different areas that you want to rub or lick or stroke or like just jab into. I, uh, there are a couple people who like say they don't really feel anything in their belly buttons unless they jab like something in. So I'm getting yeah, to like, tack onto that. phantom pain imagining that. Yeah, to tack on to that, I think part of the problem too is so many people are weirded out by the concept that they don't realize that like way in the back there, there's a cluster of nerves. And, you know, it just depends on the person, yeah, but most of them connect, you know, down below. So it ah. makes it this thing of it can be a very sensitive spot. But from the people I've talked to, like people... I don't want to make it sound religious, but like people I've, I've turned on to this sort of thing, they have to get that stimulation in order for them to be like, oh, okay, you know, I see what this is about. And that is where a lot of people draw the line. So at least for me, it's a thing of like, all right, we got to go deep. Okay. The more you know. Things that make you go, hmm. It's just mind blowing, honestly. It's a lot of things that I hadn't thought about before. So I'm just trying to process it all. Just remember, Rule 34 of the internet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If it exists. Yeah, that's true. I can see it. After you after you said that, I can I can understand, especially where you, you were talking about, like, the bundle of nerves argument. I, I get it. Yeah, I mean, for me, like I said before, it's primary, like, like the visual aspect of it. I, I don't know, just something like, I can't put words to it, but just something about the area where it's in. It's just very sensitive, and a lot of people are very sensitive about that area in general. And I don't know. It's just it's just great. I just love them. <laughs> yeah, for a lot of people, it's like the combination of, like, you're being poked in your belly button, and it feels good, and just the psychological aspect, like, oh, I'm being poked in my belly button. And I guess that would work if you have, like, just an idea of, like, your, your navel has some degree of just of taboo so yeah for sometimes it's like a combination of those two aspects yeah and ava was bringing up like the shame aspect of it and like as as a soft dom myself you know i i like that i dig it where it's just like a, a girl is exposing herself to me in that way exploring something that she's never tried before and there is that kind of embarrassing aspect to it and i, I don't know it gets me going <laughs> okay I'm going to switch to a kind of different topic. Do you have a type? Like, do people only like innies and only like outies? Or or does that not matter? Or is there like teams, like team innie, team outie? Like team Edward and team Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to butt in, but just like anything else, just like people you know like different body types have different you know they not mm -hmm. to be too crass but you know people are like oh i'm a tits man i'm an ass man that sort of thing it's it's just like that for anybody okay. you know? what, what you about you personally 
Uh, for me, I'd say like, uh, like in betweenies because it's kind of like the best in betweenies. Worlds, you know? Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Sorry. You're is that a word? <laughs> is that yeah, a term that used? Is. What does that you, mean? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Need Duolingo here to do some translation. <laughs> In betweenies? It's, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I jumped way deep into the technical terms. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, but no, no, no. Like uh, aspects of like an Innie or an Audi combined into one. So like. So just I'm trying normal. to think if there's like. I mean, well, how? Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> let's, not, uh, let's not ostracize people here. But, well, no, I mean like the, uh, <laughs> uh, like average. I guess, but that right because like, it, it's not too thing, in, it's not too out. There, the whole thing here is that there really is no average in the grand scheme. Like it really, well, there's yeah. a lot of factors that come into how somebody's I, turns out. I guess, I guess and, I'm just trying to figure out what classifies as an in betweeny. I feel like we would need like visuals. Oh, uh, they would. You'd have to pull out the charts. Gonna, okay, never mind. This, Ava, <laughs> okay, I'm yeah, gonna turn Ava. this over to Ava because she's she's erudite and well spoken about these sorts of things. So your turn, Ava. Oh my gosh, I uh, got my presentation on in betweenies ready. Um, <laughs> I mean, when I think of in betweenies, so I'm I'm not really an in betweenies kind of gal. Uh, so maybe I'm not the best expert. Uh, oh on this particular subject. <laughs> no offense, Jordan. Um, I think of it in between as like an kind of like an Audi inside an any. I don't know. Maybe that's not what other people think of. Um, but oh. for me, I am like, my thing is definitely innies. Um, I appreciate Audis. I appreciate in betweenies. Like I have different preferences for all of them, but uh yeah, I'm definitely definitely a fan of innies personally. Okay. What about you, David? Um I think a perfect example of an in-betweeny would be uh, Uma Thurman and Batman and Robin right before, or, like, like right after she turns into snow, uh, the fuck, into poison ivy and you, um, and you see her belly for like a scene. Her Let me kind Google of belly this real button. quick. Yeah. It's also, <laughs> it's, Do also your as, oh, it's also known as a flatty, but I don't want to get into like the, like the sub groupings of certain types of belly naval buttons, nomenclature, exactly. naval nomenclature. Yeah, I guess. I guess you could call it that. Um, but in, in between these are definitely something that I am partial to. I I like those that have like depth where like so there so there are two types of innies I like. There is the first one where it's like you don't see any details, it's it's like it's black and it's more open. And I find those to like contrast really well with a stomach. Like I'm I'm into bellies, like I can't really not be into bellies because like I'm into belly buttons. So it kind of is there by proxy. And it's just it's very aesthetically pleasing to have this highlight. I mean, it's I say highlight, but it's like a pit of darkness. It's like it's something that 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 uh, differentiates the stomach in its okay. like in its form. And it's um and, and it's also right in the middle. It just happens to be perfectly placed. The jewel. Yeah, the, the jewel. jewel, the tummy jewel, as yeah, as a exactly. lot of people say. Oh, yeah. Oh, speaking um, of jewels, and, yeah. uh -oh. do you guys like belly button piercings? Fuck no. No. Kind of. <laughs> Fuck no. no. Because for no? me, for me, it's it's. <laughs> so here's the thing: like, it really depends on the one. But just like you're blocking the the, the good stuff, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know? Really? It's like, okay. What am I supposed to do? So you, you don't and, like uh, when it's bedazzled? Okay. No, no I will say because uh, ugh. <laughs> nay vazzled. <laughs> oh my gosh! I yeah, I am a hundred percent not on the piercing train. But I will say, I, I did I did want one for a really long time. Uh, when I was growing up, one of my cousins had one, and I was just she would always like clean it and like play with it and stuff. And I was just like, wow, she's so cool. I want one too. Um, but like to me now, I mean, I, I don't, I don't like it when I'm looking at someone else. So, cause again, it's getting in the way, but also just for me, it also, I think it would get in the way of play or make it a little bit harder. So um, yeah, not a fan. Well, thank God you wisened up. Oh my Lord. I know just in time. I, yeah. Sir. <laughs> yeah. To not like them for the longest time because back to George's point, you know, they're getting in the way. I can't see the stuff inside, but I've grown to appreciate them a little more. Like it's something that I will look at and I won't be like, you know, bummed out that like I can't see it. Like, especially if it's I I suppose for for that reason I like the more got like the milder piercings, like 
like the belly bar is almost where it's just like two jewels and not and not like anything dangly or something like that but i think i warmed up to them after talking about it with um my therapist of all people and her saying that um that people often pierce things that they want to like that they want to accentuate that they want to bring to people's attention and with like the majority of the public probably doesn't have like an outward belly button fetish but if people are piercing their belly buttons there has to be something that you know they think is worthy of attention about it in some way it's something that like, i've not seen off. that much yeah yeah i actually i super agree with that i mean i still don't like piercings but um going back to like the conceptual question um the idea of someone getting their belly button pierced is is kind of hot to me because of that it's like the attention that's focused on it like either when they're getting it pierced or like in general so i guess for me like anything that has to do with like a lot of attention focused on someone's belly button is is something i like a lot um especially if it was like a guy because you never see men with belly button piercings but i still still not my thing i kind of concur with david that if it's like a bar or something like on the lower rim-ish area where it's just like the details are still on display that's fine but when you get those like britney spears early 2000s dangling things it's like come on man if it, just put it on your ears just keep it to your <laughs> <Yeah>. ears it's <laughs> you know at the end of the day i'm not going to tell anybody how to live their life that you know i don't want to affect their livelihoods they do their own thing but god damn it you know also interesting i, wanted I never would have thought to I thought you guys would have loved piercings. You're no, like, oh, it's so... no, it's hiding all the goods, right? Really? That's all the goods. Yeah. I do to a degree. There are conditions, you know. They, they do look nice. <laughs> I do I I do like how like the diamonds look, how the gems look inside of them. They're really, really pretty sometimes. But I prefer ones that look smaller because I can see inside the belly button. It's not a deal breaker. It's not like I'm gonna break up with somebody if they have a dangly belly button ring. It's just I will. <laughs> it's like i don't know it gets in the way sometimes and other times i don't really mind it okay yeah i i uh yeah, i I'm, I'm obviously playing it up a bit but you know it's the same thing it's like if somebody like a significant other makes a a general choice that you're not a fan of you know you're still gonna love them but it's just kind of like oh well okay. that's that's a thing that you did that brings me uh, i really oh sorry Sorry. Oh no, you can you can keep going. It just that just brought oh, I, up another question that I have. I wanted to jump to something David actually said real quick that I think will also help kind of elucidate things. Um, he was talking about how like it's the whole belly that you know is part of it, and that you know the navel is just the big thing. I think that's part of the thing too. Is like I'm the same way, where it's like it's the whole thing, and then that's okay. just like the, that's the treat of it. You know, it's just like perfectly placed and accentuated in the right spot and then in relation to the other parts of their body it's just like perfectly in the middle of everything so it's not just literally just that like the whole of that area is great but that is just the mwah, chef's kiss crowd jewel on top and if okay. i could add something to that there have been times when like i've looked at pictures of people with their belly buttons out like mainly like there are huge databases for like uh singers and celebrities and um and they're and they're i say tons of people but but actually it's like 10 consistent people who go onto those boards every day and post post new pictures of of, of celebrities with their navels showing and there have been times when been like i've been looking at them and it's like their navel is exactly in the center of their like body you, you get like the the head to the navel and then you get like the navel to the legs and there are people whose legs are longer than other people's but most oftentimes it's like it's also that it's just in the center of their body that just is very intriguing like i just happen to be interested in this one spot that's in the exact center of their being oh so it's so aesthetically pleasing oh and also don't get pierced because that's a chakra point you're messing with your chakras <laughs> I want to add a little thought on this one too. I, I find it really interesting to hear David and Jordan talk about like the belly button as part of the overall package, because for me, I mean, maybe it's just a personal thing. Maybe it's because I uh, prefer men, but uh, 
I am definitely all about the belly. That matters to me. Like I've got preferences for that too, but I don't, I don't need to see more than that. I'm perfectly happy just looking at like a picture of someone's belly or even just their belly button up close. That's, that's great to me. The only reason I would rather see more is because I want to see someone's face, but like the, the overall, uh, I don't know, location okay. doesn't really do anything for me. So that's really, okay. really interesting to hear. That kind of really? perfectly answers the question that I was going to ask, which is, uh, does the person attached to the belly button matter or can you just focus on the belly button? It I find that depends. belly buttons, I find that they hit different when I see somebody's face. Okay. Cause like, <laughs> that's a great way I of think you're here. It's, it's like, I'm looking into them, but also I'm looking at them and there seems like I there's like a connection that that, that there's a connection that I get by seeing both their belly button and their face that like I'm looking at who they are, like no person's belly button is the exact same. And okay. while a lot of people may have similar facial features, like everybody's different. So I'm looking at two things that nobody else has. And I find that to be intriguing. Okay. I just want to say, but is there ever a situation where if if there's ever some sort of a hookup, would you be like, oh, I like that person's belly button and I want to in- pursue that person because of their belly button? Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Really? Like 100%. Yeah. And, and the problem is, like, I've been off Tinder for like a year, right? And the area I'm in in particular, just a, full of a lot of superficial people, very judgmental. And it's to the point where, like, if somebody's not into it, I'm just mirror. Like, it's just like you're not even gonna attempt. Then you know, like, I'll still make sure you have a good time, but like, uh, yeah, we don't really have a future. Okay. I connected with somebody over Instagram because I liked their belly button and I liked their content, and um, she was also on the podcast, so that was another thing I knew her experience. And I got to talking with her, and um, we've been in constant contact for about a year. But it all started because I thought her belly button looked co- cute. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, <Coat>. David. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Go. Success stories. That's, we yeah. love them. Yeah, wow. No, it, then... it really is a thing. Sorry. Um, oh, no, you can I go. I pop off of what David was saying, where, like, you know, it sounds a little corny, but it really is you sharing this part of yourself. And, like, you know, I don't want to put words in either David or Ava's mouth, but it's something I'm really sensitive about. You know, yeah. it's a thing, like, especially as a cishet man, where you're just expected to like this thing or this thing. And then if you don't, you're <laughs> fucking weird. Boobs so, or butt. It, it, Pick one. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. And it's like, what about that glorious strip? of holy land in between huh what about that <laughs> why are we ignoring that and it's just it's always been this really frustrating thing where it's just like god damn like i didn't think it's that weird the foot guys got it on lock they got memes bro <laughs> what about us so it's just like it's it's always been very alienating and frustrating this feeling of yeah. not being able to be confidently out and about with it like any other guy would be because i remember uh, talking of bringing it way back to childhood memories. But the first time I shared it with somebody, it was at a sleepover at my house and a uh, homie was in my room and I was like, Oh, I want to tell you about something. And he's like, all right, what? And I did. And then he went downstairs and made fun of me to all my friends. There. Oh my God. And it was just no. like, you know, it was, it was just, yeah, I know it's oh like worst gosh. nightmare. Right. And so it's, it's a it's belly button dumb, nightmare. A hundred percent. And it's just dumb kid shit. And you're going to find, a lot of people who are super cool about it but it it is just this thing of like when people have that connection because i've i've run into a lot of people who are like the same way you are right they're just like this seems weird i don't know but i like I, this george guy. oh hey 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 he's, hey. he's decent i know. never said it was weird no 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 you know what I, mean, but <laughs> I said it was confusing <laughs> it's it's alien to you but that's why we're here let us be the guides on this magical journey but yes. like it, it is this thing of like when you make that connection and you find somebody who's open to that, it, it's really awesome. It's really great. And it's and especially it's like somebody you like like that. Like it's it's just great. It's so great to share just like it would be with anything else to have that sort of connection is a really, really lovely thing. And mm-hmm. I just if there was one thing I could do with being on this and, you know, 
if my sphere of influence gets any bigger over time, it's destigmatizing that and making people realize like, well, A, a lot of straight dudes suck at foreplay. So just in general, like, yo, y'all, <laughs> like there's other areas that you can stimulate. All right. But B, you know, just making it this thing of like, hey, we have all this fashion that bears that. Do you might want to consider the fact that there's a deeper reason to that that you haven't even thought of? You haven't that, even realized. That's very true. You know, it's like, why are we bearing this thing if not to be attracted to it? Why not? Why is it this silly thing? And yet there's so much fashion centered around it. And not just, you know, I'm in America, but you look at other countries like in Japan and India, where it is very much it just as common as TNA is here. That's a very common kink to have. And so props to them. They're they're ahead on this gravy train. But, you know. I, I want us to be the level of exposed that all these foot guys are. <laughs> you know? it's you have not to start fair. A, we were you have to first. start an inside job. You have to be the one to make the memes. Bro, I do not have the government power. Or else I would <laughs> You just need already. TikTok. You don't need government power. Uh with the power of Audi Bite and Ava and David <laughs> by my side. Anything is possible. Okay. I'm gonna ask just a couple more questions and then I just want free-for-all mode where you guys just maybe bring up stuff that I haven't even touched on because I have probably only scratched the surface, I assume. Um, oh, yeah. just So a couple more questions and then I would enjoy some topics that maybe I couldn't even comprehend for these questions because I just have no concept of it. Just to reference the stuff that we were kind of already talking about, do you prefer someone's belly button more over other parts of the body? Like, yes. you, don't, you don't care about the boobs or the six pack or the whatever or the, the size of whatever thing. If they have a pretty belly button, that's all that matters to you. Is that, not, is that, is it eh, maybe? Not, not all that matters. Like, no, okay. I obviously, Ave, Ave and David are going to have their own preferences, as anyone does. Uh, for me, it's a big part of it. Like the way I see it, if you've got if that area is boring, then you're boring to me. So it's just like okay. you know, uh, like I personally wait, wait, like what oh, is yeah. what is a boring belly button? What? Okay, okay, now we're really opening <laughs> the floodgates. It's like you know, it's heavily just, subjective. It's, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's heavily subjective. Okay, yes, yes, okay. yes. I don't want to. I don't want to start a flame war here. But for me personally, it's just like not enough uh, wrinkles or something is yeah, that boring no, no it's just like like the 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 type you see everywhere where it's just very okay. shallow there's not really much to it this is me personally once again i put words in anybody's mouth but just like it, it's typical and it's just like oh there's nothing no no real fun to be had here um uh, but like it's not really so, for me it's like you can't look a gift horse in the mouth or in this case a, a gift whatever in the belly <laughs> it's like you know I, I like somebody who is just even like I'm, I'm not a fan of how Instagram has distorted bodies to be these unrealistic. OK, like like they they look cartoonish. No offense if you're into that. Uh, but to answer your original question, bring it all back home. Yes, it is a big part the same way. You know, okay. I, I straight up saw somebody at the pool when I was in high school that, you know, I was like friend to friends with. And I asked her to prom. Because I saw, oh I saw my! Her at the pool. Wow. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. And guess what? She said yes. So, hey, I mean, did you tell her why though? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That was the extent of it. I was, I was, but a chaste Christian boy at the time. You know, okay. doing what I could. But you know, like it's we we go hard in these streets, Ray. <laughs> we we are we are not fucking around. All right. What what about you, Ava? Um, yeah, so I agree with a lot of what's been said by Jord. Um, definitely belly buttons are my favorite body part for sure. Um, and I, I could definitely also see myself being interested in someone like starting out based on their belly button. Obviously, like if I was going to have a relationship with them, there would have to be a lot more, uh, that I was into than just that, but that could be what got me interested in someone. Um, and for me, like, I mean, I'm on dating apps. There have been times when I've seen shirtless guys and I wasn't into their belly button. And just because of that, I swiped left. So, you know, mm -hmm. like it's got to be like something I'm excited about. Um, and yeah, I mean, like for me, this is kind of 
going off on another topic, but I would be super curious to hear other people's responses to this too. Um, if I was dating someone and they were completely not interested in belly button play, it would be over for me. That would be a deal breaker. Like I, okay. I could, I could Agreed, not, 100%. could not be in a relationship with someone who wasn't at least somewhat willing to participate. And like, maybe it's too lofty to find someone who's really into it, but I mean, it would have to be like, they would have to like let me play with them sometimes. <laughs> you gotta make the effort. Yeah. Like at least try. Yeah. What about you, David? Ava basically said what my preferences are. Um, I find belly buttons interesting, and I would. The, it is like, it definitely ranks top in like my favorite body parts. Like I probably admit I like eyes more. Like, like not under the same like psychological kind of level as belly buttons but belly buttons are definitely something that i take a lot of notice to and it's never really happened in the past but i mean i could definitely see myself becoming interested in somebody because of the way that their belly button looked like but that's not everything like i'm not gonna go to somebody that's like harmful to 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 uh myself or like or could be problematic just because they have a nice belly button. I mean, there are tons of other factors, but belly buttons are a big one too. Would you say it's like the most important factor? Uh, no, no. I mean, personality, no? obviously. Okay. Okay. So yeah. it really depends. Are we talking like pure carnal desire or are we talking like an actual emotionally satisfying? That, that could be a, that could be a whole other question in itself because are you able to do it just pure carnal desire or does there have to be a connection for I like mean, belly button it, stuff? I really don't it, know. It really depends. Like as, as somebody who's more on the dominant side of things, I pride myself in introducing that to people who haven't thought of that. And it's okay. like, when you get somebody into that, it's like, fuck yeah, man. But like, it is a thing of, I'm the same way with like Ava where it's like, if I was trying and, you know, I had talked to somebody about it and we tried stuff out and they were just like super weird about it the whole time. It would be like, you know, I'd make sure they had a good time at the end of the night, but it just wouldn't be like if if you can't even have that level of an open mind about something when it's like there's other stuff that's way more out there that's doing it way more intense. It's just not in the cards for us, be it either casual or romantic. You know, so it's just like, I'd rather, you know, take my licks, you know, cut my losses and move on. Because as as, as we've seen just from <clears throat> Ava and David alone and all the people in Audi's community and all the other servers and pages of people, there are like minded people out there. And it's only just like more recently that we've had the confidence to go out and seek out like minded people. So I would rather, you know, huff it. To somebody else's neck of the woods and have a guaranteed good time then you know have this like embarrassment and this this othering and shame be it romantically or you know just like a hookup situation <laughs> why waste my time that's mm -hmm. the way i see okay something that i am kind of confused on is is just how it works so does it have to be a main focus during sex or is it like it's whole is it is it another thing is it not even sex or is it just an accessory to sex <laughs> i think this segues really nicely from what we were just talking about and what i was saying about how it would be a deal breaker for me if a partner just wasn't down for belly button play so for me i mean i think everyone is going to have different levels of intensity with their fetish for me it is the thing I'm most interested in sexually without a doubt. Like I love sex, you know, I love other sexual experiences, but honestly, they don't make me feel the same way mentally um, as belly buttons. Like that's what turns me on the most. That's what really gets me worked up. I mean, if I'm doing stuff on my own, that's going to be what I'm thinking about. Like I'm not thinking about other stuff really. Okay. Um, so for me, it's. Um, so is it its own category away from what people would consider sex? Uh, no, to me, it's definitely grouped in with sex because okay. if, it's, if it's the thing that I like most sexually, then it's 
sex to me like i mean <laughs> no i mean i mean yeah. like we all we're all adults we all know what sex the the scientific form of it would be is that involved during the belly button stuff or oh, is it its own separate thing is, um, is i think what i'm what i'm trying to get at i mean i think like for me personally it could be both um okay. i think i think there's something that's really nice about just focusing on belly button stuff um but you know at the end of it like i i'm all for combining the two and like mixing stuff up um but i guess what i'm trying to say is like for me personally i always want to have some some type of belly button play involved in sexual experiences okay anyone else david jordan oh i, I mean I'm, I'm trying to not be as much of a hug but i i'm down <laughs> um i concur um, I kind of have a weird problem though, where like there is this this seems like a tangent, but I promise it connects. There's a really great uh naval fetish artist named Hirodi Ishikawa. And you know, obviously Japanese with a name like that, but he made this comic back in the day about a dude who like cannot get it up without the assistance of that. And that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at, honestly. Like it's a thing of like that's that's my main thing. And for me, I like combining it with other stuff. If I'm, you know, worshiping somebody there, I might use my fingers to help them out downstairs. You know, it's not just like like it, it's very selfish, even though like I know I'm talking all this shit, but like even though I have what I like, I also have to be respectful of what my partner's into. And being really greedy about it is going to just potentially turn away somebody who could potentially be into it. So, you know, for me, as long as there, I can get something out of like reaction wise out of somebody or uh, God, please find somebody who's on that same wavelength. OK, you know, we, we can figure it out. It's not like the one and only thing where I'm like, all right, girl. Now pull up your shirt and sit there for a little oh, bit, no. <laughs> you know, like, it's not like that, you know, it, it, you know, it, that's not it. It's just about, okay. you know, this is the main thing that, that gets me going. And it's, and, you know, I, I want to combine that. And the, the way I've been kind of seeing it is if I can kind of like Pavlov this sort of like, hey, I'm, I'm helping you out downstairs while I'm doing my thing and make that connection for them then it can kind of help them out with whatever, you know? Okay. And, and going from there. But it's just like, like, I just want to stress, and I've said it a couple of times, it's just like any other body part. Mm -hmm. You know, we just happen to be the people who are hardwired to be attracted to this area. So, you know, the same way there are ass guys and there are tits guys, there are, there are tummy people. That's, okay. I think what I'm specifically trying to ask is, would you be happy if it was only belly button stuff or would you eventually want sex involved on the level of like intimacy then probably yes i mean the belly button would would be a huge huge element of it like as like as it is right now but um i do have other turn-ons and those turn-ons i feel matter so okay it's kind of like a magnet and i'm most attracted to belly buttons but like like the other stuff like stuff more people are into those are okay as well but belly buttons really get me there okay Agreed. that yeah. that's definitely I, I could probably focus on that for like hours and hours but my whole thing is like if somebody's sharing that with me and they're into it at the level i am like i'm there and so it's probably gonna go further <laughs> you know but like i i agree with dave where it's just like that this is my main thing okay I'm going to propose a scenario that's like a yes or no question because oh, no. I'm still I'm still trying to wrap my head around just how important it is. Um would you be with a person and be happy with that person if they only wanted belly button stuff but nothing else whatsoever? Like no no like no no uh What's the word? Fornication? <laughs> yeah. Like, no. This is a other... sex podcast, kind of, so you can kind of say whatever <laughs> oh, no, you want. No, no, that's not 
<laughs> that's, not, that's not what I was hung up on. That's not what I was hung up on. I, I genuinely couldn't figure out how to say the term. What's the word? Uh, Population. What, no. Intimacy. What's the, no, the word Climax. for um the word for oh I don't even know the synonyms. Penetration. Sure, penetration. Yeah, that also. Um, what the the standard? What's a synonym like for what everyone in society would assume that thing is? No. What's the no? <laughs> um, I'm as lost as you. Audi help. <laughs> The climax? Like no, no, no. A synonym of here, here. A, a synonym standard. for something that's like the norm. The norm. What? What? What's the word that I'm looking for? But is it more the like does it have a more sexual no. connotation? No, it's like just, intercourse. Um, no, it's not. It's not a sexual. <laughs> no, it wasn't a sexual word. Right. It. It was. Um, I'm going on thesaurus.com. <laughs> a standard. I, um, I, I think you should. The let's, zeitgeist. Let's, rest let's restart this question. I forgot Once how I even started the question. <laughs> it was like something about like if it, would you be happy if, if so, that's all yeah. they wanted. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Um so I'm gonna propose a situation. That's a yes or no question. Cause I'm still trying to just wrap my head around just how important it is. Would you be happy with a person if they only wanted belly play? and no other form of intercourse, like no penetration, no nothing. It was only involving belly buttons. Would you be perfectly happy with that life? Or do yes. you, would you say it would have to be, there would have to be other things involved? I'd say yes, but belly play can involve penetration. Well, well, I'm saying like, if it was on its own, its own thing. Me personally, yes. But I don't think that's true of everybody by a long shot okay what about you ava um for me also yes with an asterisk i think but i know you said it was only yes or no <laughs> so yes for so, me okay so you sure. you both would be happy with that scenario yeah. where they yeah. would only want belly yeah. stuff okay interesting yeah. what about you david i think you yeah. kind of already answered it because you've brought up before that you have other needs well, if it's like a casual thing, I'd be happy to be button buddies with someone. But what? I don't think. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Don't... What? That was awesome. What was that? What is button but, button, button buddies. buddies? I love you yeah. for that. It's like butt buddies. Is that but is that button. a term? <laughs> is that a term? People I just use? made it this up. This is my first no, time hearing oh, it, but okay, I love it. Okay, okay. I you, you could have fooled me, person. honestly. You, you guys millions. could just. You guys could totally just screw with me and make things up, and I would not know. We we got to start. How do you know we're not up. making stuff up already? <laughs> this is oh, one elaborate prank show. Like so. Yeah, my name's Ashton Kutcher. You've been punked. <laughs> um, I think yeah, it's something that I've that I'm interested in, like casual belly button stuff. Um, I do have other needs, and like, I th I mean, I'm sure with time those would get filled, but. Uh, short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. Yes with an asterisk, like Ava said. Okay. If I may elaborate on the asterisk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can elaborate. <laughs> um, for me, it's it's like, you know, like I said earlier, there are other sexual things that I enjoy. Um, I feel like I don't need them. Like, I need belly button play. So for me, I would be disappointed if a partner only wanted belly button play, but I wouldn't break up over that i would i would be able to live with that if everything else was good but it wouldn't be my ideal my ideal would be like good belly button play and then also other sexual stuff um but if okay. i had to choose if i had to choose between the two i would definitely choose belly button play like if i had to give up sex for the rest of my life i would choose belly button play at a sure. girl hell yeah <laughs> I mean, are we on the same page there? I think so. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. yeah well, that was, yeah, that yeah, was a yeah. yes for everybody for the most part. Besides yeah, the like asterisk, it's, it's just a thing of like I don't think you're gonna meet somebody really in this life that that's their only thing. I'm sure they might be out there. Well, I, I figured. Like, you know, I was just trying to gauge just how much of a need it is. Like you all said yes, which is. is so surprising to me. Yeah, yeah, it's very much the thing that stems on that further sexual thing. If somebody just like hard line stance essentially blue balls you on something, you're not going to be like, oh, yeah, let's keep going. It's just like, oh, well, that's a bummer. 
you know, it takes <laughs> the wind out of your sails, you know? Okay. And it's like, it, it's this thing of like, uh, if you're meeting a like-minded person and we're already on that same wavelength, it's like, I like you and I want to make you like me more. So let's, let's do the bounce boogie and bump and have a good time, you know? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it's, that's that's all there is to it. But that that is such a huge part of it. It's like it's just how we're wired. And you know, if if I can't even explore that, then you know, why even keep it going? Like it's not going to work if somebody's not even going to talk about it. So you're telling me I got this hypothetical person who's about it all the time? Fuck yeah! <laughs> okay. I'm into it. I know this is something that a lot of other fetishists have talked about, like. As far as as connections and relationships go, belly buttons are a huge aspect of it because personally, like it's a part of my own sexual identity of my own experience of like belly buttons are what I like. Like, you know, uh, personally, I'm bi, but I have this huge focus on belly buttons that like are probably my highest kind of sexual priority when I'm I'm thinking about a relationship. And there have been people who have expressed a lot of anxiety like if i tell my partner this what if like if it's somebody i really like what is going to happen if they say i'm actually not into that or you're kind of weird for liking it like and what's that going to mean for our future am i going to have to leave like how's it how how is that going to make me look because i thought that was something that was petty and i and i remember there was somebody on the podcast i think it was like it was a couple weeks ago they had been engaged they had been dating the, the, this one person for about, you know, 13 years and they still hadn't told them. Oh, wow. And but she brought up a point like if I haven't left you for like your sexual wants and kinks, then why should I be worried that you'll leave me f for mine? So it just it seems like there's you got to have some trust mm -hmm. I mean, there's there there's certainly a lot of shame. There's embarrassment. There's guilt. There's like, what if? You know, if if people still see belly buttons as silly and trivial, like, how are other people going to take that? And it's just this thing of like, it's it's just a part of us. You know, we can't mm -hmm. change it. And I'm at the point where even if I could, I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> like, I just I just like what I like. And, you know, screw anybody who's going to give me shit about it. If if people can like, you know, like I, I like a good butt, you know, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with a the, with the good posterior, but it's just like. At the end of the day, you know, if we want to be scientific about it, that's the thing that does the other thing. And if somebody <laughs> can be loud and proud about that, and it's not even like a joke thing, they just get to be up in arms about it. Why the fuck can't I? Why am I the one who has to be ostracized for liking something completely normal? You know, yeah. it's not even that weird. And it's just this thing of like, at least in Western society, it's it's viewed as this like, silly little thing and then so when somebody comes and breaks that mold and they're like i'm really into that silly little thing like sexually then it's like well you're fucking weird it's like no you know what yeah you know no i wish it's, it's annoying i wish society as a whole could be more accepting of it's it's such simple things in my opinion as long as it's between consenting adults you shouldn't have an opinion on it you know like if you're not a part of it don't no. hate on it that's that's my outlook on most things it's just it's more the struggle like beyond just like general ridicule like i'm not somebody who cares about like masculinity or whatever like all the toxic masculinity stuff is garbage but there there is a part of you as like a cishet man that you get somebody in your bedroom and then they just kind of are like oh and it, it hurts. Oh. It does. It's just like, oh, damn, man. Like, I really liked you. Yeah. And, and now it's this whole thing. Like, I've had situations where I'm like, well, I mean, then I guess we should just go our separate ways. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's oh, not wow. Gonna, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get you an Uber. But like, hey, this is kind of my main thing. And I, I try to make it more a thing. I haven't been on Tinder for like a year. I've honestly had more luck on the gram, you know, discord stuff like the spot where i met audi that sort of thing and i've just kind of made it a thing of instead of going on tinder instead of even bothering with that whole process of potentially being humiliated in my own home just 
seek out people who are like-minded yeah. like that so we don't even have to have the conversation it's so much easier and you you avoid all that that awkwardness and that guilt and anxiety and i've just had way more luck with that and just this feeling of belonging having a community where they've all been through the same shit and it, it's so nice it's so nice and like audi i know you're in the background but props to you my man i, <laughs> I always appreciate how open you are about it and it's just this thing of like you demystifying it even having this podcast i think it's a beautiful thing that we can kind of like just talk about it and people just are like oh i get it you know we can answer those questions and go from there because it's it's great it really is great and i think a lot more people if they had the awakening of their own would realize oh i actually have that too i just never put words to it or i never really thought about it mm -hmm. they just haven't explored that yet and it's just like anything else. You, you have that one moment and something just unlocks. It's that simple. Don't knock it till you try it, I guess. Exactly. You got it. <laughs> okay. I have one final question that I think is the one that has been eating at me the most that probably uh, ignorant people like me would immediately think of as well. Oh, dear is God. Is the situation... Well, you've brought it up multiple times, Jord. The situation of seeing people in public. Um, oh, let me let me expand boy. on that. Let me expand on that. <laughs> um, so it's it's kind of split into two parts because showing the belly is so normalized. Are you ever in situations where you are seeing stuff on a person that you wouldn't want to see? Of like, oh no, my mother is in a bikini. And I can see oh. the belly button, you know, like it's that kind of a situation. You oh, know what I mean? God. Um, that's what that was one of my first thoughts when I heard about this, oh. because it's so normal. No, um, no, no, no. So, I'm cutting you off there. No, no. OK, OK. <laughs> but the, generally, that was my thought on it is belly buttons are so normal. They're everywhere. You are bound to witness ones that you wouldn't like to see. And to you, that would be the equivalent of someone flashing you. Right? I guess, but it's it's like a thing of just like, you know, there's that blood connection there. So like, at least in my case, you'll notice it, but I'm not just like, oh, yeah, it's just like, oh, well, no, 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 I'm not the, saying like, know, oh, no, like... I'm horny now. Thanks, mom. It's not, it's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. I mean it as oh. in like, as in. Oh God! Why don't look away? I mean, like, do you ever yeah, get stuck I mean, yeah, with, you just, with those? You know, okay, you, you don't. You don't make it a big thing. You just look away. You know, okay. it's just but like how like, often does that I'm, happen? I'm, not too often, but it's a okay. thing of like, let's say I'm talking to somebody and they're stretching, and I'm like, it's platonic. It's platonic. You know, you just I just maintain eye contact, and it might be there in the periphery, but it's like this. This too shall pass. <laughs> and you just you just go from there it's the same way like if somebody you know bends down and there's some cleavage you're not staring at their boobs you're just like all right well that's that's a little awkward but oh well you know it's the human okay. body okay what about what about you ava um i <laughs> i hate this question because i like with family in particular i've actually had a lot of experiences where i felt super uncomfortable like just based on different situations and it's really hard because especially when you're younger, like people love to talk about kids' belly buttons. People like to like tickle them and like poke yep. them and stuff and think they think it's funny. And like you can't say anything. You can't because if you say something about it, then they know. Like they're like, oh, it's just a belly button. Like, what's wrong with you? Um, so yeah, there have been quite a few times in my life where that has been really uncomfortable for me. And there have actually been like situations with family members where I just would like leave the room. If they oh, were like, wow. talking about it or like doing something that or like wearing something, you know, maybe I'm just really sensitive to that. But it just it it's like next level ick and discomfort mm -hmm. for me. Um, but like beyond family members, that's the only people I really have that reaction with. I don't like if I see someone out in public, I'm never I don't feel like they're flashing me <laughs> if I see okay. the button and it's, okay. it's like someone that I'm not attracted to. I don't feel that way at all. OK, so so you can kind of like turn it off. As in like, oh, that's just a belly button or I mean, I think it's I think it's just like a situation of like if I see someone like that, it's just like, well, I'm just not attracted or I'm not oh, interested. Okay. Um okay. 
but kind of what one other thing, I don't know if this is really what your question was, but what Jord was saying earlier about a situation where you're like with a friend or with someone that you're not sexually, uh, like someone you don't have a sexual relationship with and they like stretch or something. That is a tough situation to be in. <laughs> oh God. Um, and I also do a similar thing of like, I do not, I don't look, I, I try not to be a creep. Okay. Um, especially, oh, man, I've had that happen with like people I work with before and I'm just like, I can't, I can't go there. <laughs> so. Uh, I feel for you, Ave, because men, we're so bad about it. We do not care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's great. It's just not great when it's like the wrong person. <laughs> Oh, yeah like, uh, <laughs> I, I do agree though I, I didn't mean to like trample all over Ava's feelings and the whole thing but like I do agree where yeah you know, I've worked retail I've worked food and especially like you have these situations where you're like oh my god just keep it professional keep it professional oh. don't look oh my god they're getting closer oh, no. like what am i supposed to do and i even had a, a girlfriend at the time who was like man it must be really hard for you <laughs> and i was like it is it really is <laughs> you have no idea i worked at like a, a jimmy john's when i lived in ohio for a point when i was in college and you know it was halloween and i'm working the front register and just all these girls in in different outfits and they're all so much oh no like oh fuck me thank god this desk is here like oh, oh no <laughs> you know so i i feel uh, i don't know like, well you don't, know. <laughs> you don't know you know i do though it's so tough man because like if it if you said you can kind of turn it off if it's like a family member or friend it's fine if it's something where it's like a a situationship or a will they won't they that's kind of that throws something in the mix but if it's like just somebody at my job and they just like arch and it's like oh fuck me the holy land not again <laughs> like it's it's tough man it's it, it's tough to not be like that damn damn so I, okay. I feel, I feel, you know, uh, what about you, David, what's your input? Um, I know it's been a fear with like my family knowing, like if I bring any attention to belly buttons, then they would like notice that I pay more attention to them than they do. And they'll just tease me relentlessly for it. Like they'll just go like, Oh, you're into belly buttons. Really? Like, and they'll look at me with like the shit eating grin that like family members oh, do. Like, no. like, like, like when they know that they've discovered something, they can just pull at you for uh, that sucks, forever. Man. Yeah. Did that actually um, happen to you or just that's a fear? Cause that's like one of my worst fears. That's a fear. I was scared that Santa might know. That's how much of a fear <laughs> it was. No, oh, no. Dude. Did you ask him? Dude, to like, you know, he like, sees like, you <laughs> everywhere. It's so he sees you while you're sleeping. And then, you know, and you're then not only would he, oh not only Santa would he break knows it, what he you would, did. He breaks it. Santa knows what you're fat family. Family. bro. Like yeah. it, it really is a thing. When I was a kid, I had multiple things happen. One of them, a, a girl when I was in middle school did a stretch, and I kind of looked at her, and she was like, "Are you attracted to my stomach?" And I was like, "Ah, no." <laughs> you know? And it was like this whole thing. And then like you. I, I'll sometimes be so consumed by I'm like, are my thoughts like leaking out of my fucking head? Oh, like man. I have the person next to me, you know. And so like I had this girl I had a crush on later at that same school who had that same thing. She was built like an Amazon and just always had stuff riding up. She was very like free spirited, so she didn't care who saw. And I had such a crush on her. And it was this oh, whole man. thing of like, I hope she, I hope she doesn't know that I'm thinking about her and that area constantly <laughs> you know did you it's, it's, uh i just want to say know. did you have any other input on it david um as far as like as other people's belly buttons go like i just don't look at them i know that they're there i just you know i understand how everybody thinks that they're normal so i just mainly just don't i i don't look at them mostly unless <laughs> i take notice of the belly button i just treat them like I don't know that they're they're just invisible okay. because I don't want to be I don't I'd rather not be caught trying to look at other people's belly buttons it, when they're exposed because I just feel like that'd be rude. Yeah. Okay. I can see I that. Mean, I, I feel like this is just pretty basic. Like, don't be a creep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I figured. I mean, we're humans, you know. My whole thing is you're gonna look. You're gonna like it'll happen. You might glance, just don't glare. You yeah. know, and it's like we don't have the gift that ass people do where it's, you know, you can pop a look real quick without being a total creep and be like, oh, that's a nice butt. It's all on the front, baby. Like they're <laughs> gonna see. There's no uh, way that you could just be like and just look real <laughs> quick without them being like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? So this the second part to this question has kind of already been answered, but this was another immediate question that popped into my brain when I learned that people are into belly buttons. What is going to the beach like? This is an interesting question. Um, I actually <laughs> was just talking with a friend about this last night because um, I have one friend who I've come out to and we like recently and we had a conversation last night about just the whole thing. Um, and he asked me that. He was like, what's like, <laughs> do you get turned on when you're at the beach? Um, specifically for me, like it's it's not something that's like actively incredibly distracting unless there's something more happening like if someone is like okay. touching themselves or like i'm in a situation that's more sexual but if people are just out in the wild doing their thing like i will probably look um but i'll just be like oh huh, okay nice i like that one that one's not my favorite you know <laughs> like okay um so it's not it's not a big deal it's not like a huge thing um it depends on the headspace i'm in but um yeah unless unless i'm like out in public if i if i hear someone like talking about belly buttons that's different i will immediately be like paying attention to that but if it's just they're not trying to draw any attention to it then it's i don't want to say background noise but it's it's something that i notice and then immediately kind of let go of okay yeah that sounds about right i figured yeah that's it's pretty much the, the same thing. Like I, I feel like people ask us that and, and they're like, they expect us to like, you know, pop a boner or like get <laughs> yeah. really wet while at the beach, like stuff like, like just going to the beach is just an, a completely overwhelming experience for us when that's not true. At least, you know, not for me. I, I do the same as Ava. Like I look if there, if there's a belly button, I like, like it, like it, it catches like my, my glance and I look at it for, 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 for like a second and then there's stuff I don't like, but it's just, it's just something it's fairly normal. And there was something else. Um, something else I think Ava said. Yeah. Like it comes to, to like more of a public question. Like, like, like what do you do if you hear somebody say belly button or like if somebody makes reference to their belly button or starts doing something with it in public and you know, my ears do perk up every time I hear belly button in public, like, especially if I don't expect it, because like, mm -hmm. oh, where, like, where the fuck did, did that all come from? Like, it's, it's, it's that intrigue. And then, and then there's also the conspicuous thing, like, kicks in. It's like, okay, I got to make sure that people know that I'm not too focused on belly buttons or interested about it. So I'm not a creep. It's, it's also that. But it happens. And it's not a huge issue for myself. And I mean, it, you are in public, so you got to yeah. have some decorum. You got to show some decency. You, you have to show all your decency. Just basic manners. What about you, Jord? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what these two well-adjusted people are talking about, but uh, when I go to the beach, it's pure hell. Just awful. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I'm just fucking around. Uh, like they, they really did put it the right way though. Um, it's not like this all consuming impulse, you know, at all okay. times, the same way as somebody who's had to work food and work retail for like over a decade, you just, you have to have some level of like, yo, I'm in public the same way. Somebody's just like, like you, you get, you get some real knuckle draggers who are complete scuzz buckets about things, but like, you know, somebody's coming here to the beach to just hang out, soak up the sun you know, enjoy the water. I'm not going to sit there and be like, hey, <laughs> nice thing you got there. It's like, no, you know, like you have yeah. some fucking respect. So it's, you know, while it's a thing, it's the same way it would be with anybody else. Like, hopefully foot guys aren't, you know, oh, look at those, you know, like, or well, any, any, well, I don't know. I don't know. There's I've, a, there's a I've come of... in contact with at least one that was like that. <laughs> they're, they're a little, they're a little too open about their like there, but, uh, it 
you know, it's it's just a thing of, I think David used the perfect word, decorum. You know, there's a time and a place for these things. So you just have to have some modicum of being a decent human being and you'll be fine. Like it really doesn't take that much. We'll be right back.